What's going on everyone? Austin John Placer and today I'm going to be going over how you can repair and upgrade your weapons and shields in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> Shout out to Herman Miller for sponsoring the channel. More about them at the end of the video. The sentence that I just said about being able to repair your weapons, if I said that to someone playing Breath of the Wild, they wouldn't believe me and that intro would just make it sound like clickbait because that was one of the quintessential things about the game that your weapons constantly broke and you had to keep getting new ones and because of that you started to hoard your favorite weapons and the more powerful ones and never ever use them well tears of the kingdom took a previously not really utilized mechanic and then changed it around and now made it amazing remember this guy the rock octorock in Breath of the Wild, all it was good for was taking rusty weapons and then being able to suck them in and then spit out non-rusty versions of the same exact weapon. That ability has been taken away in this game and it has been dramatically improved. Any weapon that he were to suck in, he is going to completely repair the durability and he's going to be randomizing the modifier of the weapon or shield. Let's do a quick demonstration. You'll see right here I have this knight shield. It has a defense of 40. It's not a great shield, but it's right now about to break. You see it's blinking red. If I were to go ahead, drop this knight shield, and walk away from this rock Octorok, he's going to go ahead, suck this shield in. You're going to see sparkles come off of him. Then he's going to be spitting it back out to me. I didn't catch it that time. And now when I take a look at it, it's not only repaired, you can see the glisten to let you know that there is zero durability taken away from the shield, plus it now has durability up. So we took this weapon that was on the brink of extinction and just completely repaired it and then also made it better. How you go about doing this. First, you need to find a rock Octorok, which they're found several different places, but this location right here outside of Goron City is the one that I primarily just go to. So anytime I need something repaired quick, I just come here, see my man, he's gonna hook me up. But there are actually several throughout all of Elden. I know that there's one over here right next to where that minecart shrine was in the last game. I'm pretty sure there's one here near the hot springs. I'm not exactly too sure where, but from this point on, now that I know the value of these guys, I'm gonna be able to go into my compendium, take a picture of him, and then being able to use Sensor Plus, I can now track the location of Rock Octoroks, mark them on my map, and anytime that I need to repair stuff, I can go see them. The most important part about having multiple of them marked down is because this Rock Octorok can only repair one weapon or shield. So this Knight's Claymore, if I were to go ahead and just drop it, oh, or, or kick it away, that's cool. So this Knight's Claymore that doesn't have the sparkle, so it has had damage done to it. If I were to leave that with him, walk away from my guy so he's not intimidated. Get out of here, wolf. He's gonna suck it in and immediately spit it right out because it can only do one weapon repair. However, after it's repaired, all you need to do is just, you know, have him not there anymore. If you defeat this Rock Octorok, one, you're gonna be getting the drops from him, but on the next Blood Moon, he's gonna be back in the same spot and he's gonna be able to repair that one weapon or shield for you. Now, there are some limitations to this. Something I haven't tried yet, this weapon is decayed. If I drop a decayed sword, Oh, it's still gonna be decayed, but now it's attack up five, so that's nice. For amiibo weapons, like this Bogoron sword over here that you see it's power of 36, but nothing has been done to it, but it doesn't have a sparkle. If I go ahead and drop this, and he sucks it in, he's gonna spit it right back out because for whatever reason, they're not allowed to fix amiibo weapons. After it's been fused, such as this Bogoron sword with a silver Lionel saber horn, power of 91, if I go ahead and drop this, nope, he doesn't like that either. But here's a neat little thing. If I were to take out this Bogoron sword, drop it on the floor, and use a weapon that has reduced durability, and equip that, then fuse the Bogoron sword on top of it. Now if I were to take this and drop it down to the floor, he'll suck it in, polish it up, and then spit it back out. 
which as you can see, it's just had its durability restored and now it has increased critical hit damage, which is pretty great. Also, for some reason, it doesn't work with magic rods. I'm not too sure why that is. It works with any shield in the game, including the Hylian shield, which has insane durability, but it can eventually break. You can repurchase a new one in this game, but you may as well just repair it when its durability is low and then just reserve the rest of your shields for utilities, like rockets. As long as the bottom of the weapon is not an amiibo weapon, you're fine. And by the way, in case you wanna move some fusing around, just get close to them, and then they're not gonna come out of the ground and attack you. It's now a power of 76, this Royal Claymore plus Silver Lionel Saberhorn, and it has attack up of seven. Now I'm gonna go ahead and drop a save, because this is something that I want to not only restore the durability of, but I also want it to be better and there's a chance that it's going to be better than attack up seven. I'm also gonna shield this time. Now, it's attack up eight. <laughs> It's marginally better. Now it's unclear at this time if this is following the same rules for modifiers that Breath of the Wild did, which it had to do with an internal experience system that had to do with the more enemies you kill, the higher your experience is, and the better your enchantments are going to be. We're gonna have to wait and see if that's exactly how it is. If you don't like the modifier that you just got to your weapon, all you need to do is reload your save, redrop the weapon, and see if it's gonna be better. Hi, see me? Please suck in the thing. Thank you. And as you see now, it now has long thrill, which is dramatically worse. This time I got attack up 10. So now it's better. So now I'm in front of another rock Octorok. I'm gonna put down a hard save because now I just got attack up 10. I wanna see if it's gonna get better. Can we just constantly keep chaining this more and more until we hit what might be the max modifier? It's now durability up. Let's reload. Durability up again. After doing it about eight or nine times, I finally got it back with attack up and it's only plus six. So maybe it is related to your amount of overall experience in the game. Also, it seems like the attack up so far isn't that great. Like in Breath of the Wild, we had things that were attack up 44. We're not seeing those kind of numbers, at least at time of launch. So attack up eight, I'm happy with that for now and eventually I'm gonna have a better weapon and then I'm not gonna need this one anymore. And particularly, I'm using this sword to go against Lionel's and while I do reserve it for only attacking the back of a Lionel's head, every once in a while I'm caught off guard by something and I'll just accidentally hit the attack button and now it's doing durability damage to my weapon. Think of it as a safety net when it comes to weapons if you build something really amazing and when it comes to shields, especially the Hylian shield, you're gonna be fine. As far as bows go, once you come across a five shot Lionel bow that has attack of like 35 or 40 or 45, I don't know what they go to. And then that's about to run out. Come over here, drop it off at your guy and then bring it out. Maybe it has durability up, which would be fantastic. I think it's amazing that one of the largest gripes that people had about Breath of the Wild, they've included in this game and then also made it a free mechanic. Granted, it is a little limiting and you need to know about it to actually use it. It's not like there's a big sign in every town that says blacksmith here, come repair. But at the same time, this is free. And who's mad at free? No one. Well, fantastic. Guys, I wanna know what you think about this mechanic being in the game on being able to repair and upgrade your weapons. Previously, like whenever you got the Hylian shield, you were like, oh, hang on, you don't wanna grab that yet because later on you're gonna have the durability increases, which is gonna be better for a shield and then you're not gonna be able to get it with the modifiers later. It was a whole thing. But bottom line is now, you're gonna be able to repair and upgrade your weapons. If you found this information helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turning on notifications. And once again, shout out to this channel sponsor, Herman Miller. Which, real talk, you know I don't do plugs on this channel, like ever. But the gaming chairs that I've used in the past, they're okay. Like the $400 ones are the ones that you pull the thing back and then you could do that. They suck for your back and my back sucked because of them. But then with my own money, I bought a Herman Miller and body chair. And then they were like, hey, do you wanna do a sponsored spot? And I'm like, absolutely. I need a chair for the editing room 
100% I will do this spot. The Embodied Chair, while it does cost more money than pretty much most gaming chairs on the market, the difference is it's not gonna break down in two years and then you have to go buy another one. And then I've had arms fall off of the PewDiePie chair, the DX Racer chair, I've had two of the wheels stop working on it. This Embodied Chair, which every video that you don't see a chair in, that's the chair behind me. And that's one of my favorite things is like, I want to show you the room. I want to show you the experience. And because of that, you're not distracted by a massive black and red chair behind me. It's fantastic for my back. It has a cooling seat. The arms are adjustable level. So when I'm like actively talking to you, I have them higher. And then when I'm doing my slouchy gaming, I have them a little bit lower. It goes super low and super high. I literally can't say enough about this chair. If you are in a position to consider yourself a professional who sits at a desk for 12 hours a day and your back sucks because of it, you might want to look into this chair. And that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for being here. Until next time, Austin John out.